Hello and welcome to building modern line of business applications with Microsoft Visual Studio 2010. My name is Orville McDonald. I'm a product manager on the Visual Studio team and today I'm going to show you some really cool things. Uh, we're going to start off by uh, doing a demo. So we're going to jump right into it. We're going to define a data model. We're going to access the data. We're going to update it. We'll add some validation, some authentication, and some personalization. All starting from file new within uh, Visual Studio. So let's actually get right into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is shut down PowerPoint. You can see here that I have uh, Visual Studio 2010. We're looking at the different project types. And within Silverlight, we have the Silverlight Business Application Project Type. And that's the one that we're going to use today. Uh, to get started, we're going to give this a name. So let's call it uh, Northwind and get it going. What Visual Studio 2010 is going to do now is it's going to start to develop my solution. You can see it showing up now. And as part of my solution, there'll be two projects. The first one will be the Northwind project, which will actually be my Silverlight client. And this is the thing that we'll be updating quite a bit. The second part of it will actually develop a uh, or called Northwind.web. And that's actually the ASP.NET project, which will host my Silverlight client. You can see here that it's uh, start to show up. And the first thing I want to call out is often when developing business applications, people tend to hard code the strings. And the problem that we get with hard coded strings is that later on you need to make changes to it. You got to do this control F, go look through all your code, find where all these strings are defined. It'd be really great if there was kind of one central location where we could go to update those. Actually, it turns out there is. So within my assets resources, we're going to see application strings. And here we're going to see the different strings that are available to me within my project. And we're actually going to go through and change a few of these. So we can see my application name. I'm going to change that to Northwind Traders. And another thing I want to change to is uh, my home page title. I'm actually going to change that from home to customer list. So if I go through and I save that. And what I'll do also is I'll do a quick build. Build my solution. And the thing to remember is that because we have these two projects as part of the same solution, every once in a while I'm going to do a build just to make sure that changes in one project actually get picked up in another project. And you can see here that my application name, Northwind Traders, has actually been updated. And also my home tab has actually been changed to customer list. So now that we've shown like some very basic changes, the first thing I want to do is actually add some data to my project. So I'm going to scroll down. We'll see I have a Northwind.web. In this case, I'm going to do an addition. I'm going to go to my data. I can see I have uh, different types. In this case, what I want to do is I actually want to add an ADO.NET entity data model. For this one, let me call it uh, Northwind as well. You'll see that I actually have uh, two options. I could actually start with an empty model, or I could create a new one. Or, or sorry, or generate one from my database. In this case, I'm going to generate from a database. I'll click Next. I see I have a few options. In this case, I want to grab uh, from my Northwind database. And the Northwind database is just one that's running locally on my machine in SQL Server. Visual Studio 2010 now has gone out to my SQL Server, taken a, a look at kind of like all the information that's available to me in it, and I get to pick and choose which one of those things I want. In this case, looking at my uh, list of uh, tables that I have, I'm going to pick a few. So I'm going to grab my customers, employees, employee territories, order details, orders, and products. That sounds about right. So I'm going to stick with that. Click Finish. And what will happen now is Visual Studio 2010 will actually generate a local representation of this data for me uh, within my application. So you can see here that I have a visual representation of the different tables. Not only do I have that visual representation, but you'll notice that it also shows me the relationships between the different tables. It shows me where the keys are. So for example, if I look at order details, I can see that order ID is actually a key that's available to me. So now that I have this, um, I don't necessarily need this file open, so I'll close it, but it'll still remain a part of my application. So the next thing I want to do is I actually want to add a service so that way I have an interface that I could interact with when updating and changing data. So once again, I'm going to add a new item. In this case, what I want to do is I actually want to add a domain service. So even though I know where it is, the great thing with Visual Studio 2010 is that it includes 
various templates that you could use depending on what you're trying to do. And sometimes you may not know where a template's located. So you can see here I actually have a search option. So if I click domain service, it goes out and it finds that there's uh, two templates available to me. In this case, I want the domain service class. And I'm going to rename this one to Northwind Service. I'll go and I'll add that to my project. And actually, the one thing I forgot to do, as I was stating earlier, is I needed to build. I want to make sure that all my changes get uh, picked up. Okay, good. so it didn't add yet. So now that I've built it, let me go through and add that in again. Web domain service class. I'll rename this one to Northwind. And you can see I have a list of all the different entities. So these are actually the tables that I just finished adding. And I actually want to expose all of those, so I'll select each one. The other thing I want to be able to do is for my customers, I actually want to be able to go through and edit my customers in my application. So I'll go and select them for enable editing. Click OK. You can see here that I'll start off with my uh, Northwind service.bb file. And in this file, there's a few things I want you to notice. Notice that I have a get customers and insert customers. That's because I stated before when I was configuring this file that I want to be able to get that information. I could also, because I chose to edit, I had that insert and update and delete. But then when I look at the other entities, for example, like employees or employee territories or orders, they all have gets, but they don't have corresponding inserts, updates, and deletes. And that's because I didn't choose to select that ability to uh, go through and make those changes to them. If I bring up my metadata file, and I scroll through this one. We see that I actually get a list of different properties that uh, could be exposed to me. And the great thing is that not only do we have these properties, but we also have this order functionality. And the order functionality enables the data to show up in different ways in my application. So I'm going to bring open a few things. Let me start with uh, taking a look at my data sources. And if I scroll back up to our Northwind file, We can see that within my Northwind file, I have a, a list of different uh, entities. In this case, I'm going to click on Customer. And we can see that we have all of our properties, but they're actually listed in alphabetical order, which is good when I first start looking at it and I may want to know where things are. However, there are times where I may want them to show up in a specific order. So what I can do for that is I'll start by going to my toolbox. And I'm going to select all of these. In this case, I'm going to delete it. And I'm going to add a code snippet. And you can see here with this code snippet, I've included this ability to add a display order. So what that display order does is it actually changes the way these things will show up within my application so it could appear in the order that I would like it to appear. I just go and save that. So now if I go back and I select my Northwind project, and get out my toolbox and show my data sources. We can now see that actually I've changed the order. So within my data sources, I have my company name, my contact name, my contact title. So it's all in the order that I would like it to show up in. So we've done a little bit of formatting. We've changed a few strings. But now let's go through and actually uh, make some changes to our code. So if I go to my views, we can see I have a few XAML files. In this case, I want to go to my home.xaml. And within it, I'll actually uh, just focus on uh, my designer. Within my designer, what I'm going to do is uh, let me remove a few things so I don't need that. So we can see here that I actually have my uh, customer. And if I look at my drop down menu, it could show up as a data grid or details. In this case, what I want is a data grid. So I'll just grab customers, 
drag them on to my designer. With it there, I could do uh, some quick formatting. So let me uh, expand it out so it takes up the width. So now I have that. I finish my drag and drop. Now let's run the application and see what we have so far. Now we can see that we actually have our application up and running. You can see within it, I actually have the list of all my customers out of my Northwind DB. The other thing I could do is you could see as I drop it, uh, my table tends to stay right in the center, my data grid, and it doesn't really line up the way I would like it to. So let's actually go and uh, make some changes to that so we can get it to line up nicely. So I have my data grid, and I'll select that one again. In this case, what I want to do is I actually want to take a look at my properties. There we go. Do properties window. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to bind a few pieces of data. So first thing I'll start with is my width. So I go to my layouts and let me expand that so it's a little easier to read. See here I have my width and I can click on it and you'll see that I actually have a few options. In this case what I want to do is I want to apply a data binding. I grab that, select my element, try that again. So I want to select my element. In that I want to bind it to the content stack panel and the path that I want to use Will actually be my width. Like that. So now that part's connected. You'll notice that within my designer, it is now taking a, a different look. The other thing I want to do is you could see uh, for my horizontal alignment right here that it's set to stretch. Actually, what I want to do is I want to align it with the left hand side. So what I'm going to do one more time is run my application. So that way you could see kind of like how these changes have taken effect. So now it's up. You can see that my data is now loaded into the grid. As I go into full screen mode, you'll see that my grid is still aligned with my customer list. So it's all left aligned. And that's the same whether I maximize the window or I shrink it. The other thing too is that now that I have this up and running, you'll notice that I have a lot of records right here. And it'd be really nice if I could just show a subset of them at a time. So what I want to do is I actually want to add some paging. So what we're going to do now is normally you might think that, okay, I have to go and I have to write all this additional code in order to get paging to work. Well, it turns out that there's a lot of great uh, tools available to us. So if I go into my toolbox, scroll down a bit more to our select controls, and right here, I actually have a data pager. I'll just drag and drop that onto my designer. We can see how it now connects to that uh, data grid. And once again, we're going to go through and make some changes to this data pager. So once again, we'll go through our properties. And notice that I'm also able to make all these changes without having to go into the XAML. The XAML is an option. However, I can choose properties and just make my changes that way. In this case, I'm going to grab the width. I also apply a data bind. And just like what we did for our data grid, I'm going to go through and just bind it to our content stack panel. And the path will be the width. 